Hi everybody, this is Chris Hicks, Head of Press and Communication at UKIP. I'm here with Carl Benjamin. We're talking about the issues of the day, including Brexit and various other things. Um, the next thing I think we should talk about is uh, Shamima Begum, uh, an individual from East London uh, who actually went to fly out to Syria in 2015. She's now, uh, she got into herself involved with Islamic State and now she's asking to return to the United Kingdom. We understand she's also pregnant with a child. Um, what are your thoughts on this particular story? Uh, this, is a, this is a difficult story, isn't it? I mean, they, 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 there, are, there are many different aspects of the story that make it quite a sensitive one. And the thing is, I, I've noticed that, especially online, uh, but I imagine that this is, uh, these are opinions that people would reiterate in public, in person. And there, there is, I can completely sympathise with this. Um, just a hard note. Just mm. no. You mm. went and joined a terror state. Yeah. You knew that it was a terror state. In fact, she's obviously ideologically committed to it being a terror state. And so I don't want her coming back in the country, frankly, Quite. because I don't think that she's in any way repentant for any of the things that she may have done or what she, the cause that she supported. I think she still is someone who thinks that the, supporting a terror state is a good thing. And I think mm. the problem is that the practical reality of living in that and having it collapse in on itself yeah is just the reason that she's doing this. I think that if the caliphate was doing well, she'd still be there. Yeah. Um, I think, should we go through some of the, the quotes? Yeah, from certainly, because that'd be great. I've got some here, and they are just, uh, it is just wild, you know, because the, the complaint is that the, um, the, the Western back Kurds have effectively crushed the Islamic State at this point, which, and good for them. But, um, so uh, this, this is from the Times, the, the interview from the Times that, that did with her. But uh, the Times say, um, her two infant children were dead, her husband in captivity, 19 years old, nine months pregnant, weak and exhausted from her escape across the desert. She nevertheless looked calm and spoke with a collected voice, saying, I'm not the same silly little 15-year-old schoolgirl who ran away from Bethnal Green four years ago, and I don't regret coming here. Um, when talking about the reason why she left, she says, I was weak. Uh, I could not endure the suffering and hardship that staying on the battlefield involved, but I was also frightened that the child I'm about to give birth to would die like my other children, who died of illness and malnutrition, uh, if she stayed on. So I fled the caliphate, now all I want to do is come home to Britain. So the only reason that she wants to leave mm. is because it's tough and dangerous, which I've got no doubt that it is. Yeah. It's no lack of commitment to the cause, it's just that it's not working. And so yeah. she's she wants to come somewhere that it's safe, and it's like, well, you kind of hate our country, though, don't you? Yeah, it's quite. I mean, there's also other comments of her uh, talking about how she was totally unfazed when she saw uh, loads of severed heads in a bin well, for the first I, time. Well, I, I can, I can. You've got I, the exact. Quote yeah, I've there. got the exact quote. Yeah. Uh, she says that in Raqqa, mostly it was normal life in Raqqa, every now and again the bombing and stuff, um, but when I saw my first severed head in a bin, it didn't faze me at all. It was from a captured fighter seized on the battlefield, an enemy of Islam. Okay. I, only th I thought only of what he would have done to a Muslim woman had he the chance. Well, I mean, an enemy of the Islamic State could be literally anyone. You know, that could be a British soldier who wouldn't do terrible things to a Muslim woman given the chance, but because she views him as an enemy of Islam, she's now going to tell us what was in the mind of this severed head hmm. because it fits her internal narrative about Islam as, in the same way often that, like, that Juncker and the rest talk about the European Union. It's this conceptual grand idea of a, of a, a, a mythical Islamic state that they can bring into being. But this, this is the kind of thing that leads to genocide yes. because it's fundamentally dehumanizing. Yes. You know, if you don't think of somebody as a human being with a life who, who's living and breathing, you just think of them as effectively an idea, and an idea in imposing, in opposition yes, to your and, fundamental idea, yeah, then, then that's what you end up someone else's plans, isn't it? That's how you view them. And so you, and, and this is very much the way the sort of like um, the Nazis online view non-white non people in Britain. They view them as an agent of another race. And the, the same thing that she views uh, Kafar, I suppose, as a, yep. agents of not Islam. Yes, quite. I mean, th th look, this woman has made some terrible, terrible mistakes, um, one after the other, it seems, yes. and it's led to some you know, yes. awful developments. Um, you know, does she really now expect uh, a British diplomatic team to go into one of the most dangerous parts in the world and basically rescue her and take her back to the United Kingdom? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I understand that uh, a few individuals representing the government have basically well, argued yeah, this, I can, this position. I can actually, um, well, we'll get to that in a second if that's yeah. all right, because okay, I, sure. I just, I, I just, I'm fascinated by her worldview. I mean, 
She wishes to return because, as she says, the caliphate is over. There was so much oppression and corruption that I don't think they deserved victory. So it was a, a bit iffy. Mm. She's, it could have. It was just not realized very well. Right. You know, the caliphate was a good idea. It was just poorly implemented. Mm. Um, I know that everyone at home thinks of me. Uh, what everyone at home thinks of me, and I've read all of what's written about me online. But I just want to come home to have my child and come home and live quietly with my child. Um, the Home Secretary has, uh, Sajid Javid, very strong on this. Um, he said, we must remember that those who left Britain to join Daesh were full of hate for our country, which is undoubtedly true. Uh, my message is clear. If you have supported terrorist organizations abroad, I will not hesitate to prevent your return. If you do manage to return, you should be ready to be questioned, investigated, and potentially prosecuted. And Ben Wallace said that the government is not willing to risk the lives of British officials by sending them to a refugee camp in Syria to rescue terrorists in a failed state. Mm. So I'm shocked that I find myself in agreement with the Conservatives for once. Quite, And yes. that they're doing something correctly for once. Yeah, well, well, well look, I mean, we're well done, <laughs> you know, yes, exactly, I would say, yeah. you know, for, for a change, bravo, indeed, you know. So, it's, so uh, I suppose that um, I should probably represent the counter-argument, because I do think that she probably was groomed. Uh, and ISIS, ISIS propaganda is very good. I've seen quite a lot of it myself, because I've had to look into it. Um, but what's interesting is how she described the life in Raqqa as matching the ISIS propaganda, so she doesn't feel lied to. Mm. The, the the life that she led was as they were advertising it. This is going to be an authentic Islamic or Islamist life, you mm. know, mm. that you're going to lead there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, she was only 15. Yeah. She's 19 now. God knows the kind of horrors she must have seen. Mm. I mean, I think there is an argument for being a bit more sympathetic because she was what we would consider to be a child at the time. And, I mean, she's obviously been trapped in this kind of cult-like mentality for the Islamic State. Uh, I mean, her husband was continually... She said that her husband is a Dutch convert, by the way, to Islam. So he's, he's not a, a Muslim from the Middle East. And uh, he was constantly convincing her to stay, you know, because it was very tough. And she says how she was constantly finding it very difficult. And he was encouraging her to stay until he was captured and taken away. Um, what she considered to be unjust, instantly, which I found mm. funny. <laughs> you know, how many people has he beheaded? But Crime. No, he's yeah, innocent. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I mean, there, there, is, there is the argument to be made that she was a child and she's been abused. Mm. That, that, and I think there is, mm. the, the, mm. that mm. argument does have legs. Yeah. But at the same time, there is sort of like the more patriotic side of me that's saying she, drew, she ran off to join the terror state. I mean, I, I think, I mean, my major concern is kind of what kind of messaging are we sending out to the community, you know, yes. wh wherever yeah. it is, is that, you know, well, is it okay to go to uh, another country and, and fight or indeed at least support or aid and abet uh, an organisation which is a terrorist organisation mm -hmm. which is basically committing war crimes. Oh, and the other, the other point of this I'd like to make as well is that, you know, the civil, Syrian civil war will eventually come to an end. I yes. think it looks like it'll probably come to an end at some point this year, yes. which is also why I think it's great that Mr. Trump has decided to pull out U.S. troops. I think it's aided the the, the end of that uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, at the end of that war, people will need to be brought to justice. Yes. And the UN has already looked at kind of investigating. The, 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 there's, look, there's been war crimes committed on every single side of this war, and it's going to be very difficult. Not everyone will be brought to justice mm -hmm. because, well, most likely Mr. Assad's government looks like he will win. So mm -hmm. the people who committed crimes on that side, you know, may well, not be they're, brought they're, to justice. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I, I think certainly uh, the Syrian government uh, will um, certainly be very interested in bringing individuals to justice, in, including possibly uh, Miss uh, Begum and um, any other individuals who went out. Yeah, I think that it's an important point you're making because um, it's not going unnoticed that we're being particularly lenient. Um, one thing this is going to do is set a precedent for any of the other jihadi brides that were out there because mm -hmm. the uh, the lady herself, she um, the, her life over there, again, it was it was fascinating, right? She... Um, she respected, obviously, the, the friends of hers that stayed behind and have now either been killed or are now missing. Um, but uh, when, she, when she went over there, she said she was put into a, quote, house for women. And uh, she says, I applied to marry an English-speaking fighter between 20 and 25 years old. That's like a dating service. How romantic, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, that's, the, that's the thing, isn't it? The romance isn't for the person because she didn't even know who it was. The mm. romance was for the ideal of the Islamic Caliphate. And, um, and that's... Uh, that's, I, find, I find that fascinating. It's this kind of, she, she's speaking as if 
she's applying to become of one of like Muhammad's companions or something mm. like this. You know, she she it, she sounds like she's speaking from like seventh century rhetoric about familial marriages for mm. political benefit and things like this. But and and, and and the context is this is a teenager from yes. East London. Yes, exactly. It's a teenager from East London. You know, someone who should be living her life and in, in you know not not watching her children die somewhere in Syria. Um, but the, uh, the American security forces are apparently very frustrated with how lenient British authorities have been with the Islamist security threats in cases such as with Shamima Be uh, Begum. Uh, I believe they once said it to Guantanamo Bay. I've heard about this. Um, mm. I have a bit of difficulty with that. I mean, she is a British, a British citizen, citizen yeah. and I think, you know, if, if she is to be tried, we should have some oversight. Right. We shouldn't be sending off uh, but yeah. the, the, the point of it is that, you know, you kept, we put out a statement, and Jared Batten has as well, saying, look, we would not accept, and the government should not, and uh, it seems like the government is uh, in agreement with us for the change. Oh, so. I can't believe the Conservatives are doing something right for once. I don't want to have to give them any congratulations on this right. regard, but to be honest with you, this is like congratulating them for, for flushing the toilet. Well, well done for doing the right thing in, you know, in minimal difficulty to yourselves. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I like... There, there is genuinely a part of me that feels bad for her. I mean, if mm. if you get into this kind of world view, then, I mean, I guess you end up sounding like you want to join Muhammad on his conquest of Mecca, mm. which seems to be what she wants. And I, if she's done anything wrong, I mean, obviously joining the Islamic State itself is bound to be some kind of crime, so she should definitely be punished for that. And I do agree that she should be punished in Britain, but man, I tell you what, there is a part of me that's just like, no, you can just stay in Syria. Yeah. But the thing is, we, we, can't, we can't revoke her British citizenship because she's only got citizenship of Britain. Yeah. Um, she's not a citizen of Syria or Iraq or anything like that, and you, international law doesn't allow you to leave someone stateless. Yeah. So that's actually, as much as it might feel like the right thing to do, say, you know, you made your bed, you lie in it, mm. uh, legally we can't actually do that. No, quite. And there's no consular services currently in Syria for the British no. government anyway because there is an ongoing civil war. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. We'll keep a close eye on this one, yeah. I think, and uh, see how it all develops.